What's up everyone? Welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and you're watching another episode of my series Ranked. If you haven't done so already, then please be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on when I upload future episodes of this series, in addition to album reviews, top tens, and much more. Today we're going to be ranking every Bring Me the Horizon album, all six studio albums from worst to best, of course, in my own personal opinion. The arguments and debates around Bring Me the Horizon get very intense because you've got the old fans and the old sounds of metalcore and deathcore, and then the new fans of pop and more alternative inclined directions. This this is going to be an interesting episode to say the least. I'm sure certain pockets of the internet are going to be appeased and others are going to be in an uproar. So with that being said, please drop a like on the video, rank them all. Let me know how you would rank the Bring Me the Horizon records in the comments section. And of course, at number six, we have the easy pick, Count Your Blessings. <laughs> While not quite as bad as I had initially remembered, this album is just, uh, a bit ridiculous. Deathcore didn't sound very good on Bring Me the Horizon, and even the band members themselves were completely over the sound presented by the end of the album cycle. Pray for Plagues is the big noteworthy cut here, a ripper that remains a fan favorite to this day. From Ollie's guttural tones to the, uh, more recognizable instrumentation, shall we say? There's a reason why this one gets the attention still. Just look at the song titles on this thing. See if that tells you anything about what's coming straight for your emo throat. For Stevie Wonder's eyes only, I used to make out with Medusa, tell Slater not to wash his dick, do I even need to continue? I don't like deathcore. I just... I don't. Sometimes within said genre though, I can at least recognize that the talent is there and it's just not for me, but with much of this record, I hear dumb scene kid inside jokes, copious amounts of chugga chug chugging, and Ollie Sykes almost sounding like a bad impersonation of someone parodying the genre. To say it has zero redeeming qualities wouldn't be fair, especially since it's just not my style, but there's a very obvious reason why the band moved away from this style and moved away quickly. Suicide Season was my introduction to Bring Me the Horizon, as they were pretty much inescapable for any teenager using MySpace by the time it rolled out in the fall of 2008. Many of my online friends at the time were riding the scene kid high of those times and tried to convince me that their sound was for me, but I just... I couldn't get behind it. I jokingly put Diamonds Aren't Forever as my profile song the week of winter high school exams one year cause, you know, we will never sleep cause sleep is for the week and all that good stuff, but I actually legitimately found a connection to that track in the years that followed. This was a make or break album situation as the band members described it, knowing that they had to break from the lane they'd put themselves in on Count Your Blessings. It's a much better record both sonically and vocally, although I still can't at all say I'm a fan beyond a handful of choice cuts. The Sam Carter of Architects feature and just the sadness will never end in general is a staple of the band's core sound, and Chelsea's smile can still put me in a good mood if it just so happens to come up on shuffle. I'm not going to waste any more time here, it's a relatively mediocre entry into their catalog, but it also showed that they had willingness to learn and grow as musicians. It's crazy how giant of a gap in quality there is between my number 4 and number 5 picks, but it's seriously a tight race from this point on. Toss what you thought you knew of this band down the garbage disposal and then stick your own hand down the drain while it's still running to fully understand what they've done here, cause they've really cut it up this time. Almost shows that not only do they still have a talent for making fresh sounding music, but they also have the over the top ambitions needed to sell fans on such a sharp turn into Poptronica. Heavy Guitars and screams mainly ride in the trunk, allowing shiny melodies, glitchy production, and weirder yet catchy experimentation to take the front. The lads of Bring Me the Horizon are smart. They know that Amo wouldn't have been accepted in, say, 2012 after There Is a Hell. They cleaned things up while still remaining heavy on Sympaternal, they sent out a rockier pop message with That's the Spirit, and then they allowed themselves the creative freedom needed to mold Amo. As much as I'd love to say they paved the streets in gold with this record, that's not quite the case as it does leave a sense of consistency to be desired both lyrically and musically. 
That's not to say that these records don't feel like a family that ebb and flow nicely together, since they do. It's just that the writing on some moments like Nihilist Blues and I Don't Know What To Say feels impeccable, but other moments, Heavy Metal and Sugar Honey Ice and Tea, feel more conflicted. The transitory tracks range from the brutally honest ouch to the clearly only made to be a lead into mantra moment, I apologize if you feel something, and I'm not really sure how much they add to the album outside of upping the runtime. Pop sounds alarmingly good on the band when they do it right, with In the Dark lighting up with bitter anger towards Sykes' ex-wife, pulled together with a looping guitar and a biting hook that you simply can't get out of your head. Medicine is the head-turning moment that dropped just before this album to let people know we meant it when we said this album was going to be all over the place and mostly not so heavy. Amo is many things, and many opinions will be given in the coming years over what it is for the band. But if we can all agree on one thing, both old and new fans, it should be that the band didn't half-ass their attempt at a new sound, and instead, they wholeheartedly embraced the weirdness. More guest features, slower songs, clean vocals, and memorable hooks? Uh-oh, things were a-changing in Camp Horizon, and the plethora of sellout shouts began to rain down upon the band. Change happened whether you like it or not, but rest assured to the average listener out there, this was a much-needed step in the right direction. There is a Hell's extended title might sound a bit pretentious, but I really feel that the music within is anything but that. This is an incredibly well-rounded batch of music that shows off Sykes' more hopeless romantic side that seems to be in a constant state of war with his nihilistic tendencies. Canadian singer Lights is what originally attracted me to this full length as I was a pretty avid fan of hers back in those days. Even present day, I still find Crucify Me and Don't Go, both featuring her, to be some of the most praiseworthy moments on the album. Both of these operate at very different tempos, with Crucify Me being a flamethrower and Don't Go being being a tearjerker with some excellent sob screams, but I'll be damned if the band and lights don't do an amazing job at making them compelling in very different ways. Once you continue stacking up songs such as Visions, which featured some additional vocals and programming from Skrillex, and of course the legendary It Never Ends, you begin to realize just how important this album was for Bring Me the Horizon. No longer were they just the scene dudes with long hair and tattoos that screamed bloody nonsense, they were the heavy band that screamed with both intensity and intelligence. We already discussed the heartbreaking Don't Go, but I credit Blessed with a Curse as being the song that forever impacted what this band would be able to do in the future. From its moody atmosphere to its definitely not very metalcore at all guitar solo that's just so strangely therapeutic, this song is most definitely a defining moment in their history. Of course, you still get plenty of mosh-worthy offerings, with Anthem being one of my personal favorites alongside Alligator Blood, and who could forget the snarky fuck which had additional vocals from the singer of Yumi at 6. Maybe it's just me and this record really doesn't sound that great or work very well, but I wholeheartedly believe in its power and magic, and its lasting legacy for a band that went on to do many more great things. Like clockwork, Bring Me the Horizon loaded up a new set of songs for release in 2015, almost a year after the release of Drown, which was initially thought to possibly be a one-off single. It turned out to be their most commercially successful album worldwide to date, with the single I mentioned becoming a motivational anthem for fans almost instantly. When the album finally followed, it presented a new mindset for the band. Orchestral arrangements, pop-smart maneuvers, a keen sense of aggression, and more likable elements are all found here, as the band's goals were set beyond the limitations of the metalcore genre. That's the Spirit was charming and vibrant even upon first listen, but I'd say that this one has only gotten better with time. Run is an excellent exercise in ambience and suspense, Avalanche is probably still the best chorus they've constructed, and the immense What You Need channels frustrations with family and friends in an oh-so-appropriate way. The apathetic Happy song feels like Smells Like Teen Spirit for the new generation, with its cheerleader chants and searing guitars and screams once the song finally hits that final stage. Doomed is god-tier quality and possibly Sykes' best vocal performance on record ever, and Oh No has a a danceable electronic quality with true impact that gave the listener a hint as to what they could expect in the future.
The sheer attitude and presence of album number four makes it enjoyable right out of the gate, but what keeps you magnetized and listening again and again is just how damn engaging every single moment actually feels. I was psyched out of my mind when Shadow Moses hit as the lead single. The track slaps any way you look at it, and the anger feels genuine and in your face. While that one had me shouting along, I wasn't at all prepared for what came next, which of course was the album Sempaternal. Fusing elements of metalcore, electronic, and alternative rock, the guys delivered a tight, immersive experience that really had convincing emotion and musical vigor. It runs for 45 minutes, but in many ways it feels as though they're just warming up and could have had much more to say. The bombastic sleepwalking is a prime example of Ollie Sykes' ever-evolving vocal approach that's seen on much of this album, giving a raspy yell and mixing it with some eargasmic backing vocals. Go to Hell for Heaven's Sake opens with a race of symphonic elements fluttering among the guitars and drums, really nailing the theatrical vibe needed for a song of this capacity. The band then questioned religion in a very hostile manner on the excellent Crooked Young, which as a Christian myself, you might think I'd hate, but hey, who am I to step on somebody else's self-expression, especially when it sounds this great? Empire Let Them Sing remains the band's best song in my personal opinion, writing the perfect line between heaviness and meaning with a catchy melody you'll want to shout along to. The hook settles in with the glitchy electronic rager Can You Feel My Heart and persists through the haunting closer Hospital for Souls. There's rarely a moment where I don't feel connected or entertained, and at this point, I have no problem at all giving this record a perfect score. How's everybody feeling out there? There. We made it to the end of the video, some of you are probably cheering, some of you are probably very upset, but let me know your honest thoughts on the episode and how you would rank the Bring Me the Horizon records in the comments section. Other than that, if you're able to, then please support the channel by picking up some merch. There should be a link floating below your video player right now, or other than that, you can support me on Patreon at the top link in the description. There's also an annotation in the corner of the video to take you directly to my Patreon page. If you want to see my top 10 favorite Bring Me the Horizon tracks, then tap right here or tap over here for the last episode of Ranked. Up next, we're ranking Weezer, we're finally doing it, and stay tuned for future episodes on ARTV.